What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back into another video and today we are going to be talking about Daniel Jones. Now, there's a lot to talk about with Daniel Jones, especially what happened last week against Philadelphia and possibly one of his best games he's had. Not so much as a team on your back sort of performance, but more of a, um, you know, don't get in the way type of performance where you, you're not a liability. Uh, he was 21 to 20, 28, 244 yards, no touchdowns, a rushing touchdown, uh, no passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown and zero interceptions and zero turnovers at all and not even a scare or of a turnover like the week before where he fumbled twice right but it wasn't a turnover Daniel Jones we're going to be getting into obviously you see from the title down below we're going to be get, getting into everything I need to see from Daniel Jones that has me sold on him before the end of this season now you guys know you guys know me as one of the Daniel Jones apologists out here on this platform of the YouTubes, right? You guys know me as one of the, um, you know, the, this stand strong apologist for, for, for Daniel Jones, but I never said he was our franchise quarterback. You can go back in, in, in videos and, you know, I, I've said I, I think he solidified himself, but I never said he's like the franchise guy, that he is our guy. I want to believe he's our guy. I'm going to support him like he's our guy, but there are a lot of things I still need to see first from Daniel Jones to make sure he is our guy. Now, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not a tank for Trevor guy. I'm not part of that cult, right? The TFT cult. I'm not part of that. All right. I've actually been on the front lines defending. I get the TFT cult hate me the most, hate me and the hub and a, and a bunch of other guys the most. They hate us. They come to our comments all the time. So if you're an anti TFT guy and you think I am, we're on the same side here, buddy. All right. So that being said, I really want to talk about the things I need to see from Daniel Jones before the end of this season. That's going to have me sold on him to make me say I'm comfortable with missing out on a Justin Fields. I don't think Trevor Lawrence is going to be there or Justin Fields. Let's just be honest. Just by we already won three games by this point. So, um, you know, a Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, uh, and we'll get into why I don't want a Zach Wilson or a Trey Lance afterwards. But uh, let's get into the things I want to see. Now, before we get into that, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you guys are new to the channel for more Giants content and NFL content alike. But before I get into that, I want everybody to look at the past game, right? I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. And this, this is going against my Daniel Jones apologist just a little bit and Daniel Jones bandwagoners a little bit. This past game... If you are sold that Daniel Jones is our guy, I'm not judging you, but if you're sold that Daniel Jones is our guy just by the past game alone, you're setting your standards way too low. And that's sad to see. And it's not your fault. It's a Giants thing. Like we, we've been waiting to see something from Daniel Jones so long that he has a 21 to 28 performance, which is good. 244 yards, zero touchdowns passing and zero interceptions. Okay. okay the, I expect that from a franchise quarterback. That's probably the bare minimum I expect from a franchise quarterback. That's not going to have me sold on him to say, you know what? He is definitely our guy. I want to see more games like this. You really want to see more games like that where he has, I guess he had a lot of yards rushing, but I don't draft the quarterback to run. I've said this ever since before we drafted Daniel Jones. I'm not drafting a quarterback to run. I'm drafting a quarterback to throw the ball. And you have 244 passing yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, no turnovers. That's good. I expect that. I expect it. So this game should no should should not have you sold on Daniel Jones, nor should it have you off the Daniel Jones bandwagon. This this um past game was not a deal breaker in any sort of way at all. This may have helped on either side of the spectrum. Maybe you're a guy that says, hey, I want my franchise quarterback to take over games. I want him throwing for 300 yards a game, three touchdowns a game, and no turnovers, you know, a couple, maybe a couple turnovers here and there, but I want this guy to consistently rack up the yards and put the game in his hands. You know, this may, this may want, this may want you to have uh, a Trevor Lawrence or a Justin Fields even more, but I could also see the crowd like me that is saying this helps Daniel Jones's argument, but it's not selling me on Daniel Jones's argument. It helps me a little bit, but it's not selling me. So just quickly throwing it out the way, if you think Daniel Jones, uh, if you're sold on Daniel Jones just by this past game alone, you're setting your standards 
way too low. This is bare minimum standards you want from a franchise quarterback. Expect more from your quarterback. Hold him accountable. Ex- have him, you know, uh, uh, fight for more than this. And, you know, he will be our franchise quarterback. But this should not sell you. So let's get into the things I want to see from Daniel Jones before the season ends. Now, this is not necessarily a threshold, right? He doesn't need to necessarily achieve these things he just needs to get close to it where i say yeah i'll give him a pass right i'll I'll curve the grading a little bit you ever had those hard college classes or or those hard ap classes or something like that or or high school classes in general and you know everybody just fails a test and you just you just curve the grades a little bit it's like yeah maybe i was too hard on him for a little bit right so these are what i want to see from daniel jones more or less if he gets over that then that's great i'm receiving a skype call right now so hold on so like i said uh, Daniel Jones does not need to reach these goals, but he does definitely needs to get close to these goals. So let's start off with the first uh, goal I have is win, win games, right? We have six more games to play after the bye. We have about three more winnable games. So if we can get 50% of those games down, I think we pretty much have the division. Six wins is getting, you know, we, we can probably win with six wins, but we have to make sure the Eagles don't get six wins because of that, that, uh, that, that tie. It's going to be a thorn in our sides for the rest of the season as we'll be worried if Philly gets up to six wins as they have about three more winnable games as well. But First thing I want to see is win, right? That's pretty much just cut and dry. Just win. It's a a standard I have here uh, in New York for my franchise quarterbacks, you know, having Eli there for so long. Uh, The next one, I'm trying to see what order I should go into. The next one here is consistently uh, consistently making good decisions throughout the games. You know, so far in these past two games, it's no coincidence that Daniel Jones has had zero turnovers when he's, you know, he's 2-0 and when having zero turnovers. These past two games, he didn't turn over the ball once. Like I said, two weeks ago, we had a couple of scares, but he still did not turn over the ball. We wound up winning both of those games. So it's no coincidence to me. In fact, I think it's a trend. So the more Daniel Jones does not turn over the ball, maybe he'll slip up, get one or, you know, one turnover two turnovers you know in a game um let's not have that consistent throughout the the year i want him to see you know consistent uh pocket awareness like he's been having and consistent decision making with the football next up more just uh, this kind of feeds off of what i've been saying more games with no turnovers like i said it's becoming a trend more than a coincidence that daniel jones is undefeated when he has no turnovers in this season so that's good that's pretty cut and dry so that being said we then move on to more touchdowns and interceptions daniel jones has eight touchdowns through the span of 10 games eight passing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown through the span of 10 games to give you a little bit of a comparison to one Daniel Jones in his rookie season through 12 games starting he played in 13 that 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 last one I mean that first one was Dallas week one where he just came in for a snap or two or a drive right he had 24 touchdowns in 12 games he averaged two touchdowns a game Right now, he's averaging less than a touchdown per game. Through 10 games and 10 games starting, he has eight touchdowns. So uh, I definitely want to see more touchdowns. I, he, I, he's definitely not going to reach the 24 uh, touchdown you know, kind of goal that he had last year. Uh, the total that he had last year, but he has to surpass his interception rate, which is at nine. Nine interceptions through 10 games is not good. He has to get more than uh, more touchdowns than interceptions. He's one away from tying it. So uh, he's off to a decent start, but let's just hope he gets more than interceptions. Next one up is at least a 65% completion percentage. Now, this may be asking for a little much, so I'm not going to sit here and say he has to get to this threshold. This is one of the kind of uh, the ones I'm going to curve a little bit. I want to see that I'm going to set that as a goal, but if he doesn't achieve it, in fact, if he gets close to that, I will be satisfied. But so far, he's at 62.5 completion percentage, something like that, or 63, just around there. Um, I'll look it up right now. He is at a 62. 
Uh, 63.5 completion percentage. It's not terrible, all right? There's worse out there. There's quarterbacks that are pretty decent throwing 58% or something like that. So um, it, it's not that bad, but I want to see him get a little better. I want to see him progress. And part of that progression is him actually hitting his receivers, therefore helping his completion percentage. I want to see at least a 65% completion percentage. But like I said, if he stays at 63.5, if he gets a 64 or even close to 65, or even more than that, I will be satisfied. I'll be okay. But let's not go, let's not pedal, you know, pedal backwards here. Let's not regress um, over here. So the passing yards, I really don't really care too much about. But as far as like, total passing yards, but as far as this season's passing yards, I want to see at least two games. Two games, like I said, I'm going to curve it a little bit, but I want to see two games where he has a 300-yard passing day, but I want it to be meaningful. I don't want us to get blown out in a game and he throws for 340 yards in garbage time, okay? Don't want to see that happen. I want to see him compete uh, on a level, and maybe we're blowing out a team. Maybe that, maybe that counts as garbage time a little bit, but that would be a good thing, right? But in two meaningful games, I want him to see him throw 300 yards. He's gotten close a couple of times at 300. I want to see him achieve that threshold at least twice. Let's try to get that going. And last but not least, I want to see Daniel Jones have one, just one, three touchdown game. Now, everything I've mentioned is not asking for a much. If you guys think, if you guys are sitting here watching me thinking, man, he's asking way too much of Daniel Jones, then he is not the guy. Then he is not the guy because I'm sorry, this is bare minimum and I'm curving it and I'm curving it. I'm not even holding him to those exact thresholds. I'm saying just get close to it is if he has a two touchdown day and you know one touchdown is off the board because of a ticky tack call i'll be satisfied right if he has a one 300 yard game and he gets close like a two another 280 yard day i'll be okay with that but let's get close to those thresholds those are the goals i'm setting for daniel jones let's get close to that like i said if you think this is too much to ask for daniel jones then he is automatically not the guy this is what you should expect from a franchise quarterback bottom of the barrel i mean bottom of the barrel franchise quarterback should be achieving these things through the end of the season more touchdowns and interceptions who could ask for any more than that right that's just bare minimum stuff that's basic stuff from a franchise quarterback so that being said let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what do you guys think about my list what do you think about this video let me know your thoughts in the comment section below leave a like if you guys enjoyed subscribe if you guys are new i'll see you guys in the next video